Greetings and salutations. Welcome back to another extra tutorial for my Camtasia certification, folks. As you well know, in Camtasia, you've got a bunch of properties for your videos and still images. So you mess with something like scale, opacity, rotation, etc. And you can change how those assets look in your project. You can even animate those changes over time. Well, I have been pleading with Camtasia developers for years now, trying to get them to add one other property, one you might never have heard of, but it's actually a pretty common feature in some of the more advanced animation tools like After Effects. And it'll radically affect how you scale and rotate in Camtasia. I refer, of course, to anchor points. It turns out those clever devs snuck this into the product with the launch of version 2022. So at the time I'm recording this, this feature that I've been clamoring for has already been there for a full seven months. And all this time, I had no idea. That's just plain crazy. So anyway, what exactly are anchor points? And more to the point, how can you go about changing them to help your work be better. Rather than trying to explain it, I think it'll be better to show you. I drew five cards here, totally at random, and as luck would have it, I ended up with a royal flush, the best possible hand in the game of poker. What an incredible stroke of luck, really. Uh, what, what isn't lucky is my inability to share these assets with you, as I could only license them for my own use. Sorry about that, so you won't be able to follow along at home. Anyway, let's show off my hand here in Camtasia. I've got these five cards already placed on my canvas, along with a nice felt green background simulating an actual gaming table. I'm, uh, I'm all about the realism here. So let's lock that background track so that it won't interfere when we're trying to move things around. So now... I need to start thinking about how I would want to animate these cards on and off. I think, I think I'll start by scaling them up from nothing. Like that. I could start with the opacity at zero and have them fade on as well. Um, boop, 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 boop. But I think it'll be punchier to keep them totally opaque and just shorten the animation time, maybe about a third of a second. So it'll be like, bam. Yeah, I like that. Uh, I eventually want to fan them out, but for now, I think they should just barely overlap. I don't want them completely stacked up on top of one another initially, so I am going to offset them in space just a little bit. That way you'll be able to see a little bit of previous cards as the next one appears. So we'll take care of that. Okay. Let's add an animation to the others and set the scale the same way. And we'll offset these in time as well so that they don't all appear at the same time. Here we go. Okay, but something's bugging me here. See how they're scaling up from the dead center of the card? This is because that's where the anchor point is. Up until version 2022, you couldn't change this. So any time you'd scale or rotate something, you historically could only do so from the middle of the asset. The problem is that in the real world, when you fan out playing cards, you don't do it from the middle, you do it from the bottom. And I think I want these to scale up from the bottom too when I first bring them on. So let's move an anchor point. I just hold down the control key or command on a Mac. You'll see the anchor point icon change and it'll turn blue when you mouse over it. So we drag it down and it'll snap right to that bottom center point when it gets near. Huh. But what's this? As I'm scrubbing it back and forth, here we see that it's not actually scaling up from the bottom. Not really. So what's going on here? 
Well, it turns out that the anchor point is another of our properties that can be animated. So on this side of our animation, the anchor point is at the bottom where we set it. But over on this side, it's still in the center. And this change over time has led to an animation where the card sort of comes out and then up. It's actually not really a bad effect, it's just not what we're after. Now, on this side of the animation, this card has already been scaled to 0%, meaning that I don't have any good frame of reference for even adjusting the anchor point on this side. So, are, are we basically hosed? Do we have to remove all these animations and start over? Well, as it happens, no. Let me undo that anchor point move real quick, and I'll give you the deets. Okay. At some point during your editing, you might have noticed this little button up here and maybe even vaguely wondered what it did. Well, wonder no more. Clicking this turns on animation editing mode. You turn it on and you probably noticed right away that all your properties turned red. This means that they're basically ignoring all the animation points when setting the property values. Any changes you make are going to apply to the entire clip. So now, when I take the anchor point of my ace here and move it down, it repositions my anchor point on both sides of the animation, the before and the after. And now, when I scrub back and forth, the animation behaves as one would expect. Now we have to take care of the others. Here's another handy tip for precisely these kinds of situations where you need to manipulate an item that's caught in the middle of a stack. I want access to my king next, but the ace is kind of running interference. To help make this process much easier, I'm going to solo that king layer. I just hold down Alt or Option on the Mac and click its little eyeball icon here, and now I see only my king. Great. So we just select it, move our anchor point, and then we move on to the queen. Paradoxically, it is possible to solo more than one track. So now the king's running interference. So I guess this would be a duo instead of a solo. But that's okay. Just alt-click the king again to turn him off. Okay, let's handle the rest of these real quick. Okay, and here's the result. Nice. Keep in mind that the anchor point affects rotation as well as scale. So let's view this next. To demonstrate this, let's finally fan these cards out a bit. We'll turn off animation editing mode. And we're going to set up a new animation for all these. So I'll just select all my layers, hit Shift A one time, and I have animations for all of them. Now, rotating these by the same amount isn't going to give us much of a fan. So we're going to vary these rotations in 10 pixel increments. Starting here with the ace, we'll rotate. And it looks like about 45 degrees will do the trick on this one. For simplicity's sake, let's enter 45 exactly. Now, for the king, we don't want to rotate quite as much, so we'll take 10 degrees off. So only 35 for his majesty. And we'll just keep subtracting 10. 25 for the queen. 15 for the jack. And the 10 barely moves at all with just a 5 degree rotation. Now let's play this back. Looking good. Obviously we could play around with tweaking the speed, offsetting when each one animates, but I think this is good enough for rock and roll. Bear in mind that the anchor point can be placed literally anywhere. It doesn't have to be on top of the asset in question, or indeed even anywhere on the visible canvas. Take a look at this example. 
I've got the planets in our solar system placed over an appropriately galactic background image. It's obviously not to scale, and, um, well, it's been a while since my astronomy studies in high school, but I'm at least halfway certain I got the order right, at the very least. The sun's in our bottom left, and I'd like to have our planets orbiting it. So, uh, I've already taken the liberty of selecting each planet image and moving its corresponding anchor point over the top of the sun, right here in its center. So, no matter which planet I pick, you can see that it's going to rotate around our sun. Obviously, there's more to do here. I mean, I should offset their original positions, maybe animate some of them to orbit more rapidly than others. Uh, clearly, it doesn't make a lot of sense to have these planets lined up like the Rockettes. But you can see that this is a good jumping off point. Anyway, what this in essence means is that it's now possible to animate something along an arced path, something you couldn't do before in Camtasia. Heading back to our card project, say we wanted to set aside our ace for whatever reason. So, for starters, I'm going to add an invisible animation here for the express purpose of moving its anchor point from its bottom center to somewhere way down over here. It doesn't matter what length the animation is, so let's just shorten it up, you know, just to be tidy. And then, about a second later, we'll add the real money shot animation that actually moves it over. Only we won't be adjusting the position here, but rather the rotation. Okay? At least until it's no longer at an angle. At that point, we can tweak its position too. Just move it down a little bit. And now let's play it back. Isn't that sassy? So folks, that does it for Anchor Points. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please smash that like button. And uh, do subscribe if you haven't yet. It helps out the channel a lot. And if you're not already on board the certification train, you can take Texmas official Camtasia certification courses featuring the instructional stylings of yours truly. Anyone with a Camtasia maintenance agreement gets access to these courses as a free resource, so you have zero excuse you go, you learn, you benefit from the collective knowledge of our exclusive community. It is easy like Sunday morning. I hope to see you there.